Hi everyone, um, it's Ismail. We're doing lecture seven now. I hope you're all well. I hope you're all safe, staying home in this tough time. Uh, and I'm hoping we're giving you, um, you know, we're trying to give you um, a fair idea of what's going on. I know it's hard on everyone, but I think we can go through this uh, all together. Um, today's lecture, it's going to be talking about uh, three things. We're going to start with roughing in the, uh, all the services within the walls. And we're going to talk a bit about the windows, type of windows and type of doors. But before we do that, we're just going to go back and do a bit of a outline. Um, the, the, so this is the lecture outline for this week. For this, We're talking roughing in services. And when we talk about roughing in services, there's the hydraulic services, electrical, fire and mechanical services. Windows, we're going to say the, the use of windows, the type of windows, and window glazing. Then we talk a bit about the doors, which is the use of the doors and type of the doors. But before we do that, let's just do a bit of a recap uh, in regard to last week's lecture. Uh, last week's lecture, we talked about roof, roofing, how there are two types of roofing, the many types of roofing. We talked about the tile roof, the metal roof, and the concrete roof. Then we touched base on the stud walls, the timber stud walls and the metal stud walls. And we talked a bit about the service connections. When we talk service, we talked about permanent services to, to the job site and there's temporary services during the construction. We talked about as well the notice of requirement and the basics report. Um, in terms of roofing, you know, the whole point of roofing was to keep all the water tight and water away from your house so you will be able to do uh, anything inside the house from painting to jeep rock uh, to tiling and so forth. Uh, we talked about main types of roofs. There's the tile roof. This is the most common in Australia. The metal roofs and concrete roofs. Now the roof has a certain procedure and every roof has a very similar procedure. Safety is number one. So you install the safety rate before commencing any work on the roof. And, um, and then after that, you install your fascia and the gutter. So you do all the guttering to, to, collect, to collect all the water and you put your fascia boards. And the reason why you do it that, it's because it's easier to do it before you put the roof tiles. Uh, once you put your roof tiles, it becomes a bit harder to put the guttering and the fascia board. Then you install your sacking, which prevents all the dust and the water from entering inside the roof. Because when you put the roof together, you might have tiny bit of leaks or tiny bit of holes or that get the dust and uh, the, the water through, uh, the sacking will allow it to, to act as an insulation and stop it from going through. Then you install your timber battens to hold the sacking in place and the timber battens are used to load the, um, the tiles on top of it. Then you load, you load your tiles or metal sheets onto your, uh, your roof. Just a few, few photos showing you how this is the rail. And you can see they put the buttons here just temporary before they put the sacking and then they remove them by bit and they put the sacking okay as you can see they removed a few from here put the sack and they put it back again right and then uh, finally they load they load uh, the the install the timber button and then you load your tiles on the roof okay this is the type of metal roofing that we we talked about before and most preferred Type of roof for me is the roof, the concrete roof. It's uh, it has to be waterproof. This is the key point of it. Then we touch base about stud walls. We talk about two main types of stud walls: uh, metal stud walls and timber stud walls. And I'll show you a few photos in here. That's a metal stud wall. Uh, and they put it straight away. It's easy to put. It's lightweight. It it doesn't rust. Um, you don't need to cut it, uh, you know, it, 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 they all come standard length. Um, and this is the timber stud. Timber stud is stronger, obviously. It can take more load. Uh, it's, uh, it takes more time. It's not as durable as the metal stud, but, uh, but it's more solid. Some people prefer it, and obviously it's more expensive. Then we talk about your services. We talked about your temporary services. Any site you need temporary service, you start with electrical. You have electrical board. And the electrical board, it depends. The size of the board and the number of boards on site depends on the project size. 
so for a, for a normal duplex or a house or townhouses you just use this kind of stuff then you go to that kind of stuff once you go to more bigger bigger um, bigger project now with the with the water you have your temporary water during construction obviously and you have your temporary sewer line for people to go, go toilet now with permanent services we talked about the electrical so the source of the, the permanent services are in the electrical are substations so substation there's a couple of types there is the kiosk which is the green brick box outside the building or it could be inside the building uh, within the building and, uh, and, and this is an example these are louvers for the for the substation this is from the inside of the substation now there is another source of for the could be again it depends on the on the size of the project you have the power pole um, so they'll take power straight from that pole in underground to go into the site okay um, for the water and the sewer you have your water supply of the, for the project is provided by Sydney water and as well the portable water and recycled water are supplied by Sydney water as well we talked a bit about the notice of requirement for section 73 if you recall we said the notice of requirement it's a legal document that specified the work required before the project can be occupied and what it does it does specify the water connection size and location so sometimes you have not enough or the pipe inside the, the ground is not enough to supply your project so the the notice of requirement it will give you uh, a, a guidance and it will actually tell you that you need to upgrade that water size and the location of it sometimes you have to redirect the the the, the, the pipes it, you, you sometimes you have to upgrade the main or sometimes you have to do a sewer diversion it all mentioned in that certificate now your basics report it's uh, it's actually a building sustainability index that's used to give you a control heat gain and air movement for cooling through glazing and roof and it will specify it will outline uh, the kind of glazing the kind of uh, ventilation that you need if you need a rainwater heat tank if you need a, a swimming pool if you're allowed to have a swimming pool if the swimming pool need to be heated or not or allowed or not so this is the sort of stuff that you you really need to be aware of this is it for last week um, uh, lecture today's lecture as i said we're going to talk about roughing in roughing in it's a new term for you guys but what it does i'll explain it in a second we'll talk about some windows types and you know what's the windows are used for and why the glazing and we'll talk about the type of doors okay now just let's start roughing in roughing in services when we talk about roughing in what does roughing in mean yeah usually roughing in it happens after your wall framing so once you strip your formwork once you put your stud tra stud and track and you put your framing your walls and before you put your sheet your walls or before you you close them and you close your ceiling you do your roughing in which is in a simple term it's all the wiring and all the ducting services and all the pipes that goes inside the wall prior doing any closing of these services now uh, it depends on the project obviously the, the, the complexity goes to depends on the project and uh, what kind of services are there so I'll give you these these are the two there's a metal stud frame and the timber stud frame once we do these stud walls as, as you recall you can see now it's bare stud wall there's nothing in it in here the same thing in here so the boys haven't gone inside and start roughing in when I say roughing in start putting all their wiring all their pipes right so I'll give you another picture showing before and after so you can see here that's bare there's nothing in it and here you can see they're starting putting all their hoses that's the hot water and the cold water they start putting the mechanical ducting inside the ceiling before they close the ceiling they're putting all these backing timber inside your um your they starting running all your wire the timber backing are basically just to hold these pipes in place yeah so now we will start talking a bit about 
we're not going to go into a lot of detail in this course because this is your first year you will gain these experience once you get on site and start seeing that um, for any question uh, please don't hesitate to send me an email or send Ahmed an email and we will explain anything that's need to be explained for you guys um, now with the roughing in as I said you have um, the types of roughing in we're talking about this the hydraulic installation and we'll go into a detail in details in the next few slide shots you have electrical wiring you have your fire when I say fire you we're talking about uh, fire sprinklers uh, dry fire and wet fire and I'll explain it in a, in a, in a second and you have your me mechanical wiring and ducting um, now now when it comes to um, your your hydraulic and all these wiring and everything in roughening there's something very major I would like you to know before prior roughing in yeah the most important thing you need to use licensed contractors when I say licensed contractors contractors who has license not a backyard contractor who just do because of shape or price now a licensed contractor okay make sure you have the latest plans before your contractor do any roughing in on your site yeah and now before you so you take these plans and so you don't have a lot of conflict on site you need to coordinate between these services when I say coordinate sometimes you're gonna have clashes between your pipe of like the stormwater pipe and the, and the ducting and then and the, and the ducting coming from the air con. so you need to make sure to coordinate and uh, uh, avoid the clashes in the services and that's your job basically and the job of the site manager on site okay there is a responsibility on your subcontractors but the most important thing if you sit with your subcontractors and coordinate these services so to avoid the clashes on site and delay on site and of course delay and clashes will cost money now to make sure that your job the job of every subcontractor is perfect and is handed in to the next other subcontractor because don't forget you first thing you might start your uh, electrical wiring uh, once the electrical subcontractor finish he will hand it over to the plumber to run his thing but when the plumber is putting his pipe sometimes what they do is they 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 punch a hole into the wire or something so to confirm that there is no such an issue there's a there's a document called inspection test plans which is called ITP and this is handing over from one subcontractor to another subcontractor so first thing every subcontractor will you give him some sort of a you know ITP so when the boys finish um, the installation of the frame you get an ITP from them so you go through it with them you check everything all the stud in place nothing cut so when the subcontractor the next subcontractor comes on board he will be able to say okay now this job is done uh, I haven't created because that was for example cut before and it looks like that this is an, this is an example of an ITP it shows you the activity okay uh, this is for piping and fitting for example and usually it get ticked by inspection by the subcontractor by the inspector the site supervisor on site could be visual could be through testing so there's so many things you can do this with the, the ITP but ITP is really really important okay um, the other thing is so when it this is when it comes to roughing in so now let's talk a bit about the hydraulic services when you're roughing in hydraulic services obviously you're going to be roughing in the hot and cold water you're going to be roughing in the gas you're going to be putting in, in place all the drainage pipes and the venting okay the venting for the toilet uh, and that's usually the plumber does this sort of stuff then you have to run your sewer pipes inside the building or inside the house or inside the townhouse and then you're gonna have your rainwater harvesting so this is where the rainwater get collected and get through all the pipes you put all these you rough in all these uh, things inside the stud wall or in the ceiling now usually you use hydraulic planes that shows like this it looks like this to show you how you're gonna put your pipes through the building this is a block of units okay and the, you can see these are 
the, um, the, the this is the drainage point so it's it all runs through here and you have all sort of drainage and it shows this is the drainage plan it, it shows you the the roughing uh, the other hydraulic plan that shows you all the hot and cold water and the sewer running all inside the apartments and it tells you exactly where it get collected and it goes to the main street where you have all the valves so all these goes inside the building before you do sheeting before you close your walls and ceilings and once you do that and with the plumber do that you go and inspect it with them sign the itp he'll sign the itp and hand it over to the next subcontractor now with the with the hydraulic as well you have your storm plans uh, this is an example of a stormwater plan. This is a block of townhouses up in Kellyville. And you can see in the stormwater plans, it shows you all the pipes, all the pits running inside the slab, all the stormwater tanks. All this, this is all part of the roughing in the early stage. Okay. And these are the plans that it shows you. Now, sometimes you have as well, not only in stud wall, roughing in could be inside the slab, as we said before when you're preparing to put your services from last week uh, as well it's considered as part of roughing in as you can see they put their all the conduit inside they put all the pipes inside so that could be inside the slab now with the stormwater as i said to you you have your rainwater tank that's the same job i was talking to you about in kellyville where you have big stormwater tank this is part of all the roughing in while the boys are working inside you can put all the stormwater on the outside and get all these get back and connected to the to, to the chan houses um now with hydraulic services as well in during roughing in we talked about the there's a certain uh colors that the plumbers use and it's common between all the industry so for example when you see a black pipe like this or black a black pipe that black pipe means it's a cold water pipe okay and they put it in the stud wall before they do their final uh closing all the the jib rock okay when you see a red pipe that's a hot water that's to run all the hot water when you see a lilac that's a recycled water and they use a the recycled water usually for toilets they use it for uh, laundry for uh, to wash with it okay and non-portable water so that's the color for it when you see a green which is not shown in this photo that means that's a rainwater pipe work okay that's coming from the rainwater pipe work sometimes the you know they 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 come and these are the main colors basically now the last color that you will probably see is the gas which is the yellow color the yellow represents gas and you can see here see how there's a gas here there's hot water cold water and this is you can see some electrical wiring and of course it all depends on the complexity of the job so this is just normal townhouses which is very straightforward but when you come to a block of units you can see like a high not a high rise when you took three four story block of units you can see the complexity of all these pipes where they put them in here and they run them inside so this is the gas cold and hot water going inside uh, you can see as well these are all the sewer pipe as well they're, they put in inside the stack before you close it off and these are wrap, wrapped with insulation so when the toilet flush or when the run water runs through the pipes you, you call this lagging acoustic lagging and what it does it stop the noise to coming straight through okay so um this is uh, this is another uh, photo of another job where you can see a lot of things are running inside the ceiling so when i say roughing in it doesn't mean only in stud wall as i said it's as well in the ceiling and could be inside the slab as you can see here from another photo and here you can see the, the the cold and the hot water in here inside the, a bathroom and you can see these are drainage these are pipes as well that they use to for the ac it drops and it gets connected so it drains um now We'll talk a tiny bit more more specifically about the cold water in the hydraulic services when you do roughing in the cold water selection it depends on the water availability and the pressure requirement from the street okay and uh, council plays a massive role in the, the 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 water selection and it will tell you it depends on each council uh, there's a lot of councils some councils are very strict in regard to their water requirement especially in the hills area or blacktown area 
where council requirements in regard to water to recycle and drain water and non portable are very strict so you can see there's a lot of restriction there from it depends on the subbies oh, depends sorry on the on the council so in terms of cold water selection uh, it all depends on the water uh, availability okay and uh, the pressure requirement and uh, all these are as well in the NOR and it's all affected inside the job right now with the with the hydraulic services we talked a bit about the cold water now when you talk hot water the two sources for the hot water inside the building or two types i would say of hot water inside the building you have your centralized hot water system which looks like that so it's a it's a they, it will be located in a common area and it will be running through all these pipes and goes back to each apartment or you can have an instantaneous hot water system individual for every apartment or every townhouse or every house or every duplex so these are the two two, two types of hot water uh, that you have now so we talked about hydraulic services cold water and hot water now when you talk about sewer okay and then putting the sewer inside these uh, run all the sewer inside um, the sewer is basically uh, it takes all the waste water from inside these uh, individual units to the main the main usually is located either in inside the property and running through the property or outside the property but you need to run all your main your your waste water inside the sewer main now that sewer main sometimes it needs to be uh, encased if it's within if, if it's close to the building um, and I'll explain this sketch in a second uh, sometimes you have a sewer running inside the building or adjacent to the building so when you run the sewer next to a footing the footing effect or influenced uh, affect the sewer so in order to protect that sewer you need to call it encasement encasing a sewer means covering that with a bit of concrete all around it right now if if the sewer is not within the influence zone of the building okay then you don't need uh, let's for example this is the influence zone that's the line showing the influence zone anything in this area in here okay it's within the influence zone if it's outside the zone okay so you don't run a 45 degree there's no need to do any encasement of these pipes okay now if that pipe imagine that pipe is sitting somewhere in here to protect that pipe you need to encase it with a bit of concrete now in order to do that you can't just do it yourself obviously you have to make sure that you have approval for to do the work and the work has to be done by an authorized subcontractor and sydney water has to inspect and usually the guys who do these encasement and this sort of work are specifically specified by sydney water there's a list on their on their sydney water website where they tell you who's kind of people you need to do i'll show you an example of a, of a sewer encasement that's on one of the it's a small it's a small duplex um somewhere in roselands and you can see that's the sewer main now this is the junction where it get connected back to the back to the uh, to the house but this is sitting within the, 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 there's gonna be a building in here therefore it's gonna be affected and you can see that the boys they're encasing the sewer by concrete that's basically they just put concrete over it okay uh, <clears throat> now hydraulic services as well when we talk about sewer i need you to have just to understand a few terminology that and you'll be aware of it so when someone talks to you about traps and what kind of traps traps are basically they 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 avoid the sewer smell to goes back so the actual uh they get connected to the toilet and and they always have some water left inside the trap to avoid the the smell to go back inside the house now there's few kinds of traps you have the p trap and that's because of the shape so you can see there's a p it's like a p okay and this is a q trap like a q and this is an s trap so the shape of the trap it has its name from the shape of the trap now as i said these traps are to avoid the smell okay now when we talk about hydraulic services and the sewer as well there's a few other terms there's the gully trap the gully trap it's a basing with a trap 
okay, to collect the wastewater from the shower, from the bath, from the sinks, and from the laundry before discharging into the main sewer. Yeah, and with the gully trap, you have some vents that are connected to regulate the air pressure in the waste system pipes. And this is an example. Yeah, so the sink comes into the trap, it goes to a gully trap, and the gully trap has uh, it has a vent okay that goes up in the in the in the air and to allow all the water to uh, sorry the smell to go out okay it doesn't and you can see there's water in here it doesn't allow the the smell to go back so the smell goes out from here straight away once everything is flushed now with hydraulic and sewer okay this is another services in here no storm water should be discharged into the gully trap and when we talk storm water this is all the water as you can see here this is an incorrect connection and this is a correct connection so this is your residence when the water when the water get connected or the storm water discharge okay when you discharge your um, uh, don't don't mix don't don't mix to discharge uh, of of the sewer into the storm water so you're actually infecting the storm water. the proper way to do it is the sewer get connected to the sewer where it goes to a treatment system and the storm water goes to the council outside the council um, storm water pits so all the time do not mix storm water with your um, uh, sewer Um, just one second here. Hydraulic service again. I mentioned storm water. When we talk storm water, it's water draining off the site due to rainfall on roof and land. So the water, when it rains, it get collected through the gutters, storm water pipes, storm water pipes get connected underground, and it goes outside to the drain. And sometimes there's a storm water pit inside the house or inside the property where the, the water get collected, the groundwater get collected. So your backyard and stuff get collected. The, everything get connected and goes out to the street to the storm water. And now with the storm water, this is an example of storm water. You can see all the gutters. And I showed you in the photo before, if you recall, there's a massive rainwater tank. So all the storm water get connected into the main storm water tank. Okay. Now this is storm water. The storm water usually it's managed by um, storm water is managed correctly. It has to be managed correctly because if it's not managed correctly, you'll have a lot of problems from these points you have your soil sorry your soil erosion and you have so this is a problem when you have a stormwater problem you will have um, erosion so if the stormwater is not connected properly and it's not maintained properly you're gonna have soil erosion and you'll have a lot of pollution waterways okay and once you have water waste pollution and you're taking your storm water to stand it's not it's not more it's not managed properly you get big fines hefty fines you can see here because it was during construction we were not able to run the storm water properly so everything it was a disaster okay now the storm water usually design is done by a storm water engineer it's a civil he's a civil engineer and they call him stormwater engineer they done all sort of stuff and they issue plans like the one I did before like this it shows you all the stormwater lines that's going to be all connected and the stormwater pits and any rainwater tank required it's all shown on the stormwater design by the stormwater engineer okay now stormwater You need to manage your storm water by using rainwater tank above ground or below ground as we shown before okay you need to maintain your natural condition on the site okay so that what does that mean minimize your cut and fill and minimize your impervious areas okay so concrete driveways 
anything concrete in the backyard because if you use a pervious areas what happens when the water sits on this pervious area it doesn't have a way to go but when you use sorry you need to the impervious areas are areas like concrete so when the water comes on it it stays there try to minimize the amount of concrete and you know on site so keep the green where all the water comes in and it goes straight into the soil you need to manage your storm water properly okay and this is an example of some some storm water tank rainwater tank where you can see some rainwater tank above ground and you have some water tank below ground okay and again the water comes through the stormwater pipes into the rainwater tank and the rainwater tank are used with pumps like these to take the water back inside the house to use them for laundry as or for toilet flushing okay and the basics reports will tell you the sort of stuff what need to be done now this is the um, roughing in yeah so every time you do roughing in of all these pipes so look I don't want you to get confused between roughing in and all the services roughing in is putting all the main services before we close everything but we touched base on the hydraulic services and the type of hydraulic services it will give you a, an idea toward the end of the lecture it will all you'll have a general idea and you'll understand the whole thing so as you can see once you do your roughing in make sure you do the testing you test all the pipes before you close anything and you hand it over using an itp okay as you can see here um there is all these pipes hot water cold water these are the hot water meters because this is a centralized system yeah so this is this is the hydraulic hydraulic services inside the slab or inside the walls or, or that's during roughing in now when we talk about services electrical roughing in again same like storm water and hydraulic with electrical services you need to relate to an electrical plane and these electrical planes like this they are prepared by an electrical engineer right and these planes electrical engineer produce many type of planes so he produced the lighting plane where he show you all the lights location of the lights okay and then he will show you as well the power and the comms planes again so the power it shows you where the power points how many power points in each apartment or each unit or each townhouse or each room and even in the comms area or the comms area when i say comms area the like courtyards and some in common they call them common plain common areas he show you all that again note for all our services in roughing in, always use the licensed contractor right and the electrical roughing means that all the electrical cable that have been pulled through studs and other framing members without loud switches okay without the lights without the outlets or any devices attached it's only the cables okay and they pulled out through the roughening i'll show you some photo of these um electrical services and again same like the storm water and the hydraulic you have them inside the slab before you pour concrete and you have them inside your stud wall you can see all the wiring running through here yeah everything in here now with the electrical as well services we're going to speak about we, we spoke about the hydraulic we spoke about the hot and cold water and the sewer and and just to give you an idea about this terminology now again we'll talk a bit about the electrical the electrical um, elements used in the running so when you talk about element elements you're going to have your metering equipment you're going to have your main switchboard which is uh, it's it's usually they put in a main room where all the cables run to a main switchboard and that's where the big control of everything there you have your distribution board they call them db where they, they your little board usually located over your fridge in your house or inside the, inside the house there's distribution board now when you talk house distribution board usually it's a uh, common areas they call them house distribution board that's a distribution board related to all the lights and the power to control the lights and the power and other items inside the common area they call them house distribution boards now the electrical elements you have some active wires the positive and you have your neutral wires you have data cabling and you have the phone and gas as well because 
the fern and gas as well the metering they always run a certain data cabling which is totally different than your uh, your your uh, uh, the, the cables the blue cables you see they're different kind of cables but they all call, call them data cables um, you have your GPOs which is general purpose outlet which is the way the power you take the power inside the apartment now and you have the positioning and numbering of these outlets usually is as per the design and the client's needs. So the client will tell you how many he wants in one room. Sometimes he wants five, sometimes he wants four. It depends. Right? Now, all this all governed by the power allocated in the maximum demand. So when the electrical engineer provide his plans, he provide uh, an Excel spreadsheet showing the, the allocated maximum demand. So sometimes you have a building that has a lot of commercial uh, sh stuff like restaurants and stuff and they require a lot of power. Sometimes you can't have it so you have the electrical engineer has to find a certain way and a certain solution to reduce the amount of demand. I'll just give you a few photos and a few examples what we just spoke about for example this is a metering and you can see these are all digital metering these days it's called embedded engine if you heard that term this is the main distribution board as i said to you it sits inside the the main room the comms room um, and all the main cables these cables here the orange cables comes from this main distribution board so the main cable come from the street could be from a substation or from power pole inside the main distribution board and the board here distribute all the cables back to these apartments or these townhouses and this is a small one uh, a home this is the home distribution board for all the common so all the lights and all the power in the common area and this is the little distribution board that you see inside these houses or inside the apartments um, sits sometimes over the fridge Right. Wow. so this is this is uh electrical services now let's talk about about the fire services so when we talk about fire services okay uh, that's we're talking about the wiring for the fire services like smoke detectors smoke alarms uh, the roughing in of the uh, uh, sprinklers so you, when we do the roughing in we don't put the sprinkler heads we just put all the piping for the sprinklers they usually come in red and you have something called the FIP the FIP is the fire indicator panel which is controlling all the components of a fire alarm system. The panels receive the information from an environmental sensors such as heat or smoke detectors that detects changes in the environment associated with fire. Yeah? The FIP usually is monitored by the fire brigade. So when you have a fire inside an apartment or inside the building, the, um, the, it will detect the, it, it will raise the alarm in the FIP uh, panel. And the FIP will send a signal to the fire brigade and automatically the fire brigade will come. I'll just show you a few photos of the fire services and this is called wet fire. Wet because it's wet, like sprinklers. Dry fire is like smoke detectors and smoke alarms. This is the sprinklers. Usually they're inside the basement, but the new rules now, you have sprinklers anything over a three-story building. You need sprinklers. And this setup is for the fire brigade when they come and they connect their um, their uh, hose into here. They take the water from this setup and then they run inside the building for in case of fire. This is an example of another basement with all these um, uh, sprinklers. And this is the FIP panel. So you can see all this panel is connected. It's all lights. It lights when there is an alarm and then it sends signal to the fire brigade right so we did hydraulic we did electrical we did fire and now we'll talk tiny bit and give you a tiny bit of understanding of the mechanical services again uh, again the mechanical services are prepared by a mechanical engineer and uh, through a mechanical uh, as well mechanical plans um the mechanical services usually they are in the car park and basement ducting anything ventilation related so in the car park in the basement ducting uh, and uh, in the mechanical as well we touch base about the ventilation and we talk about the ac so there's many kinds of ac air conditioning units you have wall mounted air conditioning units where you see it everywhere they call them split system you have your ducted air condition which you have a main 
uh, machine sitting outside and then all the hoses and there is a little machine inside and all the, the hosing goes inside the ceiling and you have vents in each room and you have something called a VRV which uh, it's, it's similar to a ducted uh, AC but it's a variable refrigerant volume so they don't use the hoses they use refrigerant pipes it's more expensive but it's more convenient where you have a uh, low ceiling you don't need to have big hose um, to run your ventilation or flexible duct I should say not hose flexible ducting right so the flexible ducts lines for AC units these are terms that in the mechanical okay you have the fans that they need to be installed for the laundry the bathrooms and the kitchen the suction fans where they suck all the bad odor bad smell and they take them out and uh, a rule of thumb never ever mix the bathroom duct with the kitchen duct yeah you never ever do that the bathroom duct it has its own outlet and the kitchen duct has its own outlet okay and all the ducts should be secured so when there is a lot of ventilation they don't pop they don't they don't break so they need to be secured properly now these are a few few examples of a wall mounted system which is your split system that you used to this is deducted as I can as I said there's a main uh, unit inside the ceiling and from this unit you can see the, the, the ducting goes to every uh, area with a ventilation okay now this is the VRV system as you can see the VRV system they run through a refrigerant pipes they don't have the ducting so less uh, headroom less ceiling uh, area right and you can see this is when we do roughing in this is how they chose this is the ducted this is the duct inside before we close the ceiling right and you can see these are the internal units that they installed there with the housing and everything again this is sort of a roughing in you can see all the hoses are running are running here Um, I hope this. I hope uh, everyone is uh, is understanding. And if I'm going a bit fast, all you have to do is go back. If you have any question, please don't hesitate to send us an email. We'll explain a bit more to you guys. Now, this is this is um, services and roughing in. Okay, we talked about electrical, stormwater, hydraulic, uh, fire, and mechanical. Now let's start with windows. Okay with the windows what's the purpose of a window okay windows are used to bring natural lighting and ventilation and it controls the heat gain inside the unit or the house okay use of windows what do we use the window okay according to the national construction code national construction code used to call the bca building code australia they changed the name all habitable rooms they should have windows and the window area to be minimum 10 percent of the floor area so if you have a 50 square meter of habitable room yeah you need 10 percent you need five square meter of an area for the windows that's the code okay Sometimes you can you can do things in a different way, but you need to talk to your engineers uh, who does a different kind of reporting, and they will give you all the answers for that. But this is the this is the rule, right? Now, with the windows, so so many type of windows, okay? And the windows, when you look at it on any job, it's, there's a schedule on each plan drawn by the architect usually, where it shows you these windows. This is uh, the, the look of the windows and these are the height and the width and the numbering on the plane. So you look on the plane window number two, that's how it looks like. The height is 945 millimeter and the width is 2890. So that's the width and that's the height, right? And the, the window it shows you here, like this one is an awning window. This one, it has a sliding to this side. And when you look at an elevation, always you're looking at the window from outside okay from outside not from inside okay now again, the more windows means there's more heat and there's more noise okay 
when you hit you have heat gain and noise can always be controlled by using a specific type of glazing so you can go double glazing you can go um different kind like 12 millimeter rather than use six like this is a beautiful view in here and this man is having a heart attack just because of the noise coming from the thing now let's just take a window and look at it in detail and just give you some some notations what they call it so you'll be familiar with this sort of stuff so you can have timber windows and you can have aluminium windows now the timber windows have been used since the beginning of the construction yeah and slowly slowly it's got to be replaced by aluminium windows and even vinyl the pvc windows which they're not very popular in this country they're popular overseas in europe um, and you can see from the window here that this is called the head of the window this is called the sash which is the sub seal and sub head so this is the seal there's a sub sub seal in here and this is sub head that middle section in here called the transom and the side it's called a jam okay so these are the terms are used now there are many types of windows so we're not talking about the material used we're talking about how the window and it depends so this one for example it's a fixed window so it's just fixed panel they call it fixed panel or it's a horizontal sliding window as you can see it slides okay there's other kind there's an awning type which is called top hung window it, it's like an awning and there are louver window you can see there's louvers like this now as i said there's many kinds of window we're just gonna just familiarize you with the main common one the, 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 the common ones that we use everywhere okay now when it comes to window okay the window glazing plays a massive role in the window itself you have the safety glazing now safety glazing is usually required in a number of specific locations if you have a full glass window walls curtain walls the, the windows the, the glass has to be have has to be safe has to be safety glazing and when I say safety glazing, so when it shatter, it depends. Sometimes it shatter into small pieces, or it's it's a strong. It doesn't shatter quickly. Okay, and, and they used, for example, in shower screens, in glass doors, in full height uh, glass windows. These are toughened glass, so they heat treated. So if it's broken, it shatter into small pieces. They are the different kind. They laminated glass, where there's two sheets of glass. They're sandwiching uh, in an interlayer plastic film so it's when it's broken okay any of these shadow will remain stuck on the plastic it doesn't go into small into everywhere so it stays stuck in its own place it's called laminate the glass okay and again the window glazing is governed by the basics report the basics report will tell you what kind of glazing you need to use and the thickness of the glass Continuing with the windows glazing, you have your obscured glazing. Usually, traditionally, it's used into your bathrooms, into your laundry. Double glazing. Double glazing is usually used. This is double glazing. It's used to contain energy and reduce the transition of heat from outside. So it reduces the heat, not the noise. Usually, double glazing use use a big role into the heat. So use of double glazing may require complex air conditioning unit and climate control system okay so it it all goes together and again the basics report is a good guide so this is this is um, just a touch base about the windows and the windows type and just to familiarize you with some terms now let's move to the doors again what do you use the door for obviously you use the door to get away not just into your house but all the individual rooms there are those that have to keep out elements and give security okay keep the kids away special doors may be used to control the spread of fire and to reduce no noise transmission these are called fire doors usually they specific doors they solid core um, they used in a specific area like for example in the fire escape area <coughs> and the doors sometimes you can use an external doors obviously they used outside the walls and outside uh, on the outside walls yeah, and they need to be restrained to environmental condition so sorry they need to be resistant if there is rain wind they need to be resistant you can't use any other door you can't put an internal door for an external use internal use they generally hinge door sliding okay and these doors they can come solid door or hollow core door 
I'll give you an indication of the look of the doors. There's many types. Now, very familiar now, the people are using a lot of metal doors. In the door frames, uh, you can get the timber frame, you can get aluminium frame, or you can get the metal. Everyone's trying to get that look of metal now. Again, these are the names. This is called architrave. They're all around the door. These are the head of the door. These are architrave. And these are the door jams. So architrave, it's what goes around the door. And this is the, th the threshold. These are the legs in the jam. Yeah. I'll give you an example of a metal door frame. It looks like this. Again, the doors, like the windows, they have a certain schedule. They have a certain schedule that goes like um, like this. This in the door size, usually they give you the door width and the door height. Okay, and there are some standard sizes. You can have the 2040. When I say 2040, that's the door height and 620 and that's the wall, the width and 35 mil it's just the thickness of the door 35 mil we're not talking door frame we're talking the door itself these are just the standard size common size common standard size or you can get your custom doors where it had where where you have an, an a certain inadequate space for door or you have wide access uh, or you have a full high door like floor to ceiling high you use this kind of doors with doors as well you have your common common door types you have your normal swing hinge door that's the most common one or you can have a bifold door yeah you have um, a stacker door where they stack they slide again this is aluminium door that they have a stacker door or you have um, a sliding like a hanging door hanging sliding door again we talked about the doors there's the door types you're gonna have the flush panel solid core so it's solid all from inside it's more expensive or you can have a hollow core which is lightweight and it's hollow from the inside um, I hope I can I covered most of the stuff and um, we will talk about we'll do a recap next week but this is it for today I hope you uh, I didn't bore you if you have any question please let us know